All right, so um, we're just gonna do some extra examples. I'll do, um, would you guys like some more simple examples or maybe ones that have a few different parts that you have to like consider all at once? Just one, just one, just one to start with? No, but one difficult one. One difficult one? Okay, so here we'll say f of x is square root of x plus 2 and you could add this to your notes from last night if you wanted to that'd be a good place to put it so square root of x plus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 18 does that feel difficult enough or do we want to complicate it some more that's enough? We can start there? Okay. So what are the two types of functions that we recognize are going to limit our domain? Remember, the three options are rational, radical, and logarithmic. So I see rational, right, because I have a fraction. And so the bottom of the fraction is what I'm concerned about. So in rational functions, the bottom of the fraction cannot equal zero. And then what else do we have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a square root, and the other name for square root is a radical. And what do we know about radical? Can't be negative. So the stuff underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so which part do you guys want to deal with first? The bottom. Okay, so we're going to say x squared minus 3x plus 18 cannot equal zero. And we have a quadratic, how do we solve it? We factor. So we're looking for two things that multiply to be 18, but add to be negative three. Six and three, I agree with you there, but negative six and positive three, perfect. So x minus six, x plus three, it can't equal zero. And so what are the two values for x that we have? Positive 6 and negative 3. So x cannot equal positive 6. x cannot equal negative 3. Okay. Then we have to deal with the radical. So the stuff underneath the radical can't be negative, and it, and it, but 0 is okay. So I'm going to say this stuff underneath the radical, x plus 2, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then what should I do? Subtract the two. So x is greater than or equal to negative two, but we have to skip negative three and we have to skip positive six. So we have two different sets of limitations. We have to make sure that we limit all of those things at the same time. So all the numbers bigger than negative two or equal to negative two but skip negative three, skip six. So how do I write that? The little u, mm-hmm. So we're gonna have a few different sets of answers. So if we say negative infinity to negative two, then we're saying all the numbers smaller than negative two are okay. So if we read this, this says x has to be greater than okay. or equal to negative 2. So negative, two negative, 2. negative 2 to positive infinity is part of it, but we have to, but negative, think about where negative 3 is. Negative 3 is behind, negative three is behind negative 2. It's smaller than negative 2. So as soon as we said x has to be greater than negative 2, we automatically are getting rid of negative 3 anyway. And so this one doesn't really feel like it affects us because we already got it. Um, but if I write negative 2 to infinity, then I'm including 6. 
we have to skip six. So how do we write that we're skipping six? Okay, so six, do I put a bracket? No, I put a parenthesis. U. Six to infinity. So this is interval notation. It means everything from negative two to infinity, but you're skipping six. That's what that notation means. Okay. So a uh, uh, bracket you use when you can equal that number. So we can equal negative two. A parenthesis you use when you can't. Infinity is always a parenthesis because you can't technically equal infinity. Okay. All right. Should we do a couple more of those to feel more comfortable? Okay. Uh, which part did you dislike more? Just the end part or was it like the individual pieces? We need to see more of those. Yeah. Um, how would you write it in the other notation? You would say x is sandwiched between negative 2 and 6 like that. And you would say you can equal the negative 2. And then you would say or x is greater than 6. So typically, um, we say we either say all real numbers, but you can skip a couple, or if it's something like this where you're saying everything bigger than two, then you really just have to write it one of these two ways. Yeah. Yes. X squared minus three x plus eighteen doesn't have any real zeros. Oh, it should be minus eighteen. That was a good catch. We 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 um we treated it like it said minus eighteen and we didn't notice it said plus. No, you're good, you're good. Can you guys go back and switch that? I didn't even I didn't even notice there. You guys knew what I was thinking. Thank you. All right. Let's try another one. So we'll say f of x. I'm going to say log base 3 of negative x plus 2. Um, minus square root of x plus 5. Okay, so what type of functions do we have here? We have a log. What do we remember about log? It has to be greater than zero. All right, what do we remember about radical? <coughs> greater than or equal to zero, okay. So we're going to have two sets of inequalities to solve. One of them can equal zero. One of them can't equal zero. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to say negative x plus 2 is greater than zero. And for this one, I'm going to say x plus 5 is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So what do I do on this one? You could add x. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say 2 is greater than x. And I'm going to flip it around because it, it messes with students typically if it's written backwards like this. So I'm going to say x is less than 2. All right. So all the numbers less than 2 are good. Can we use 2 exactly? No. So we can't use 2, but we can use all the numbers less than 2. And then what do we do with this one? Subtract 5. Subtract 5. So x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So this one says all the numbers less than 2. This one says all the numbers greater than or equal to negative 5. So what numbers can we have? Negative 5, 2. Negative 5, 2. two. And what do we put around those? Bracket and parenthesis. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to write it the other way, we've got x sandwiched between negative 5 and 2, and you can equal the negative 5. Okay. <coughs> 
Do you want to try some on the sheet, or do you want to see one more example? I need a tiebreaker because I heard one of each. One more. One more. Okay, we'll do one more. Um, if you look at the sheet, is there one in particular that makes you nervous? The last one. The very last one? Oh, never mind. Hold on. There's a back. We're going to, I'm yeah, the ones on the back, up it a little bit. Um, I'm going to help you guys when we get to problems. So 12, 13, 14, and 15, they all include factoring um, of stuff that is going to be in an inequality. So we're going to go, we're going to stop halfway through the class and go over some more of those. So for right now, you're looking at ones um, like 1 through 11. Can we do 11? Can we do it? We could do 11. Just do that one exactly. Okay, this can be our last one. All right, so if we look at this one, what do we see? Definitely rational. So what do we know about rational? The bottom can't equal zero. So this right here can't equal zero. And that can't equal zero. And then what else do we see? What does ln mean? It's a yeah, it's a natural log, so it's a log. So we see an ln, what does that tell us? It's greater than zero. So that's an inequality. So this part right here x plus 2 is greater than 0. Those are the things we have going on. Okay. So we could do this one first because that one's easy. So what do we have for this part? Yeah. Plus 5. So x cannot equal 5. Okay, that's going to be part of our answer. What about for this one? Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite it over here. X is greater than negative 2. So X is greater than negative 2, but you've got to skip 5. That's what we have right now. All right, and then what should we do over here? We have to factor it. So we're looking for two things that multiply to negative 24, but add to positive 2. Positive 6 and negative 4. So we're going to say x plus 6, x minus 4, so we have x cannot equal, negative 6 or positive 4, okay. So we have everything bigger than negative 2, but you have to skip 5. You have to skip 4, and you have to skip negative 6. So what do you notice about the stuff we have already? I'm noticing something about the negative 6. Yeah, we can ignore it. It's going to be skipped anyway. Okay, so I'm not going to use this one in my answer. Okay, what is the lowest number that our answer is going to be? Negative 2. So I'm going to put a negative 2. Can I include it? No. no. Okay. So parenthesis. And then we have to skip 4 and skip 5. So how do we write that we're going to skip 4? And then you. And then parenthesis 4 to 5. 4 to 5. And 5 to infinity. So this means from negative 2 to infinity, but skip 4, skip 5. Yeah? Would you ever give us this on the answer and make us write the problem? I might give you, I wouldn't give you one that complicated, but it, I could give you one um, and say come up with a problem that would do that. Um, but this exact problem is just one of the many answers that would work. So you, you could do anything, like you could use a radical as well to make that happen. Um, you could, the bottom would be easier if you just wrote it in factored form. You know what I'm saying? Like there's ways to make the answer easy for yourself to write. Yeah.
Okay. Yes? Do you have to include the part with the 4 5, or can you just go from 4 and then start with them to back with 5? If you did not write that part, mm -hmm. then you'd skip all the answers between 4 and 5, and so your answer would technically be wrong. Because there's a lot of decimals between 4 and 5, and all those decimals are okay. It's just the whole number 4 and the whole number 5 is wrong. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I think I'm going to give you guys like 30 minutes to work on it. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we'll see how far we get. Sound good? Okay. I had a few people ask me about number nine. So whenever I see a problem, I run through the list. Is it rational? No, it's not written as a fraction, okay? Is it rational? No. Is it radical? Is it logarithmic? No. Those are the only three functions that limit us in some way. It's all real numbers. Or, what's another way to write that? Negative infinity to infinity. So when we are finding the domain, we are writing down what our limitations are because those tell us what we're not allowed to plug in. Here we said there were no limitations, so we can plug in anything we want. No matter what the number is, you can plug it in and get an answer. All right. Does that make sense? So whenever you're approaching a problem, you just run yourself through that list. Is it rational? Is it radical? Is it logarithmic? If your answer to all those is no, then it has no limitations, and you're good. All right? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add some more examples to our notes, and you for sure have to add these this time. The last ones, it was okay if you didn't write them down. These ones, you have to, because I'm going to show you what happens if it's got a problem where you could factor something that's part of an inequality, okay? So here is our example. We're going to say f of x is the square root of x squared minus x minus 30. So it's not rational. It's not logarithmic. It is a radical. All right, so what do we know about the radicals? Okay, so the stuff underneath is greater than or equal to zero. And then what do we do with a quadratic like that? We factor it. So we're looking for two things that multiply to negative 30 but add to negative 1. Negative 6 and 5. So x minus 6, x plus 5. So this problem would have been a lot easier if it had said can't equal 0, but it's an inequality. And when you have inequalities, it's not clear what the symbols should be based on the problem right here. So anytime you are solving an inequality with factoring, you have to draw a number line. Have to. It's not an option. You have to. Okay. Now this thing that we're doing right here, we're learning it for the first time right now. This process is something we're going to use later in pre-calc. We're also going to use it in calculus multiple times. So what we're about to do is we're going to make something called a sign chart. Okay. And it's something, it's a common idea. You won't use it every day, but you'll use it often enough. You want to be comfortable with it as soon as you can. So the two values that we have are positive six, right? X cannot equal positive or it could equal positive six and then negative five. So those are the two numbers that are going to end up on my number line. And these are the two numbers that would make this inequality equal zero exactly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative five is an okay answer. You can plug in negative five, it makes it equal zero. Six is an okay answer. You can plug it in, it makes it equal zero. And we know that equaling zero was okay. All right. Next, we're going to pick a number that's smaller than negative 5, and we're going to plug it in. So what's a number smaller than negative 5? <coughs> negative 7. All right, and here's how I plug it in. I do it in the factored form because it's easiest. So negative 7 minus 6 is a negative, right? Okay, so I'm going to say that's a negative. Negative 7 plus 5 is also a negative. So if we have a negative times a negative, what do we get? 
a positive. Okay? What's a number between negative 5 and 6? 3. All right. So if I do 3 minus 6, I get a negative. If I do 3 plus 5, I get a positive. And negative times positive is negative. Okay. What's a number bigger than 6? 8. 8 or 7. Either one would work. So if you did 8 minus 6, positive. And then 8 plus 5, positive. And a positive times a positive is positive. All right. So we have a positive section of answers right here and a positive section of answers right here. And we were looking for answers that were bigger than zero. So this is where the numbers are that work. This is where the numbers are that don't work. Okay? And that's because these numbers right here give you a negative, and you can't square root a negative. All right? So for this one, we're going to say that our domain is from negative infinity up to negative 5, and then from 6 up to infinity. So negative infinity up to negative 5. Should we put a bracket or a parenthesis? Bracket. And then 6 to infinity. And what should we put around 6? Bracket. So what was the part of the problem that told me this was the process I had to do? It was an inequality, and what was I doing with the inequality? I factored, okay? So if you only have one x with an inequality, like you did on the front side of that worksheet, if you only have one x, then you're fine. This is the issue you have when you have two x's, okay? All right, let's do another one. So for this one, we're going to say f of x equals log base 5 of x squared minus 4 plus 1 over x plus 7. So there's an easy part first. You want to get that out of the way? Okay, what's the easy part? x cannot equal negative 7, and that's from this part right here, right? And that was because x plus 7 can't equal 0. So that was the easy part. And then the other part is the log. What do we know about logs? Can't be negative, and it can't equal 0. So we're going to say x squared minus 4. And then is greater than zero. Perfect. Okay. And how do we solve x squared minus 4? Difference of squares, yeah. So we're going to factor it using difference of squares. We have two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. plus 2, x minus 2. So we have one of those situations where we have two different x's as part of an inequality. So that means we have to draw a number line. And what are the two numbers that go on the number line? Okay. Now right here it says greater than 0. You can't equal 0. If I plugged in <coughs> negative 2, I would get 0. So I'm going to show on my number line, I can't equal negative 2. And I can't equal positive 2. Those would both make the inequality equal 0, which is not OK this time. OK. What do we do next? We test a number. So what's a number smaller than negative 2? Negative 3. So negative 3. All right. Negative 3 plus 2. is negative. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative. 
A negative times a negative is positive. Okay. What's the number between negative 2 and positive 2? 0. Okay. 0 plus 2, positive. 0 minus 2, negative. A positive times a negative is negative. Okay. What's the number bigger than 2? 4. Four. 4 plus 2, positive. 4 minus 2, positive. A positive times a positive is positive. Okay, so we have, we have to choose the parts um, where our answers are greater than zero. So that means we're not choosing the middle. The middle would have been bad. We're choosing the two sides, right? Those are where you're greater than zero. But we know when we answer this, we have to skip whatever, if negative seven isn't skipped, we have to skip that for sure, okay? So this part right here is saying from negative infinity up to negative two and from positive 2 to infinity. That's what this answer says right here. So we know that's most of our answer, but we also have to skip negative 7. Okay, so I'm starting with negative infinity. So I'm starting on this part of the number line. So the number line was telling me from <coughs> negative infinity to negative 2. But we know we have to skip negative 7. Put negative 7 next. Okay, so we just did the part. This is us doing the part from negative infinity to negative 2. So this is us doing this part right here. But we knew we had to skip negative 7. So there's us skipping negative 7. Why did I put a parenthesis there and not a bracket? Can't equal negative 2. Okay, then I have a U, and now I have to write this part over here. So you only put a bracket when it can't equal? You put a bracket when it can equal that number. Mm -hmm. So we got our U, and now we're writing this answer. Two infinity. Two infinity. Okay. Why would you do negative two to two? Oh, because you can't do that. Yeah, because negative two to two was the middle, and that part was negative answers, and that would be taking the log of a negative which would be a problem. Okay. All right. How are your brains feeling with that? A little bit stretched, a little bit uncomfortable, but like kind of grasping it? Okay. All right. So our plan is we're going to grab that worksheet again. And then what problem should we try? You want to do 15 because it looks terrible? Okay. Let's do 15. All right, we got two easy-ish parts that we could do first. Yeah, let's do that one, okay. So x minus two cannot equal zero. So x cannot equal two, okay. And then we have this part over here. x squared plus two x minus 63 cannot equal zero. And what do we do with that? Factor. Anyone know what the factors are? Okay, so x plus 9, x minus 7. So x cannot equal... Negative 9, x cannot equal 7. Okay, so we've got these three that we're going to take into consideration. Okay, <clears throat> now for the more difficult part, what do we got to do? It's a log. So we're going to take the stuff <coughs> inside the log, and we're going to say 2x squared plus 4x is greater than 0. Okay. Say it again. Okay, GCF of 2x, taking it out. X plus 2. Okay. What's our next step? Not 
far. Well, we, you can't do that. Because remember, at this point, if there's two x's, we don't know what the mm -hmm. signs are supposed to be. Yeah. No. No. Look back at what we just did on your notes. Number line. The next step is the number line. Okay. All right. So you're not done. You're just <laughs> learning. So what? What are the numbers that should show up on the number line? So negative two for this one. Anyone know what this one's supposed to be? I heard it. Zero. So it doesn't matter what the number is. Anytime you have an x in the front like that, that x is always zero. Okay. So this x is negative two. The other x is zero. Can we equal those? No. No, we cannot equal those. So I'm not going to fill it in. I'm not going to fill it in. Okay. What do we do next? Pick some numbers to plug in. So what's a number smaller than negative two? Negative three. Okay. So two times negative three is negative. Negative three plus two. A negative times a negative. Positive. Okay. A number between negative two and zero. Negative one. <laughs> All right. So two times negative one is negative. Negative one plus two, positive. And a negative times a positive, it's negative. All right, and then over here, we'll plug in six. Two times six, uh, six plus two, positive. You might be noticing a pattern here. All right, so we are saying that all the answers that are smaller than negative two are okay and all of the answers bigger than zero are okay. That's what we're saying, all right? Um, but we also have some excluded numbers over here. Okay, you guys ready to start writing this? Okay, I'm gonna start with negative infinity. So this was supposed to be negative infinity to negative two, but we have to skip something. We have to skip negative nine, okay. So instead of saying negative infinity to negative two, we're going to skip negative 9, and how do we write that? Negative 9. Negative 9, negative 2. Okay, so we just did this section right here. Negative infinity to negative 2, but we knew we had to just skip the negative 9. So we're good with that. The next section is supposed to be 0 to infinity, but we have to skip to and we have to skip seven. So it's supposed to be zero to infinity. We have to skip two and skip seven. Okay, so we're gonna say zero. We're skipping positive two. So zero, two. Mm -hmm. How do we finish skipping two? Put a two there. Okay, and then we gotta skip the seven, so we're putting a seven there. How do we finish skipping seven? Seven to, infinity. seven to infinity. So this is the part right here where I'm saying from zero to infinity, but skip two, skip seven. One thing I like to do um, in this class especially is there are problems on here that are similar to what would be on a test, but I always want to challenge you because if you can understand the hard problems, you can do the problems. Does that make sense? This is a little bit overkill for a test, but if you can handle this, then you can handle it, right? Then that means you can handle all of them. Okay, we have about 18 minutes left, so your goal is to see how much of this worksheet you can get done. Okay? All right, go ahead and work on it. If you get stuck, what should you do? Should you sit and struggle? No. No, you should call me over.